instructions on how to publish music and tell me, you know, like what's what's the good way and the bad way and because every time i find podcasts it's just like a series of like 13 podcasts and that's all they talked about was step one through step eight blah 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 and da, 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 da. like all right once i go through that that's it I, I, I figured it out but there's nobody actually staying abreast of what's going on in the publishing world podcast wise they'll talk about the music industry and all the shade room shit but it's like all right like the articles today, I can't wait. Me personally, I can't fucking wait to talk about it so people can understand. Like, yo, do you understand what's going on? <laughs> do you understand what's going on? Because these these articles that we're about to talk about today is pretty pretty much what I've been um, forecasting over the last probably six months. How how long do they start? Like, when do they buy Little Wayne's catalog? That was like a while ago. Yeah, right? yeah, and that's when I was having these conversations. I'm sitting there like, "This is crazy." Do you see what's going on? Like, people are putting their catalogs together for bigger, like, exit game strategies and shit. And this is really bringing it full circle to where, okay, now it's really making sense to where, you know, what what's going on, and I, and now you really see the big players in the game because people be thinking the Vimby's a big boy. And wait till we wait till we. Look. Let's pull up these articles. Let's go. Ahead. Should we go live? I didn't even go live yet. I was just recording, so we still got the footage. Uh, no, no matter. <laughs> I'm not sure if the shit even worked last time because I went on IG and it wasn't on there. Well, it's on. Well, it wasn't it was live for a little bit, but then afterwards, it wasn't like it didn't save or anything. So yeah, I just I, and then I uh, checked it out, and it only shows like the middle part of the screen. Oh, okay. So it doesn't go land, like it doesn't go landscape. It just it goes portrait, but it only <laughs> it doesn't. It's not okay. responsive. But um, but yeah, I had I have been having to go live on Facebook and YouTube. Okay. That. Let me see. Yeah, that shit got me high than more. Yeah, yeah, that was my biggest thing. It's uh I couldn't find any anything. That you know was like a Joe Budden podcast or like a flagrant too or you know what i mean like something i can just go to daily and be like all right what's going on with mark what's going on with publishing or was you know i think it's a, such a small space <laughs> i think you know i believe i i, I agree i agree I mean, a lot of people probably don't feel like it's worth the <laughs> like they don't feel like there's enough uh, audience there to i disagree with that part we're about to we'll find out that part of the I, I, I mean, that's all I'm like, I don't know either, but I'm here for it. Like, I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm here for the results. Like, either way, you know, no, maybe I mean, you won't, maybe it's not big now, but maybe in the future it will be. And then we'll look back. You guys can think about that too. Like, I don't know. It might be something that's a, it seems to be, it could, could be something that's a growing space that maybe people don't realize, like, every, anybody can get into, you yeah. know? And that's really, um, that that was one of my uh that was one of my things that I did my one of my call to actions um was I hit up like Dung and Tory and all of them um like in 2018 and I said yo straight up this is the move I promise you hang with me this is gonna be the move and I was talking about publishing. I said, this is where it's, this is where the money's going to be. They'll, I, I got the, I put a, um, a Google document together and Google drive and send it to them and everything. It was, just, I'm sitting there like, this is, this is the process. And that's when we first started with your music. And I, and I sent you the process. I said, yo, this is how it's done. <laughs> like straight up. I was like, this is, I figured it out. And I, I spent like the whole summer trying to, I was like, yo. I figured it out. 
and I was so adamant at that time. And and, and now, you know, 2000, what, four years later, you see how important publishing and ownership rights to music really is. And that's just something that started dawning on me back then when I was just trying to figure out how we were going to get your music out there. It was just like, how much can we do? And I think that's when ownership really dawned on me. It was just like, because every time we kept putting it somewhere, it's like I think I think is is when um, Spotify tried to do the uh, SoundCloud effect where you could just upload your songs to sound, Spotify, and that's when I started. But that's when I started spazzing. I Remember, that. yeah, yeah, that's when I started. Spa- no, they got rid of that shit. They got rid. Yeah, of Yeah, like whatever happened. Yeah, exactly. with that? They even launched that. I remember. I remember when I came uh, out, I was like, yo, that's going to really mess the game up. I, mean, I, I feel like that just spazzing. never happened. Like, whatever happened with that? It yeah. was like IG taking away the likes. Like, what happened with that? I think it was... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I think it was the whole trying to figure out how, how we're, uh, the ownership situation. It's like if you're putting music on there and then they had to do clearing the uh, sample rights and... You know what I mean? They, people couldn't just, like, just throw music on there and everybody just started getting their stuff banned left and right and... And, I, and that's when I was saying, I was like, yo, Spotify's messing up the game. Yeah, I said they messed up the game because now you can't. And that's when we had the whole, that's the whole spot of, uh, SoundCloud thing, argument. It's like, yo, that was the last place you could really do that. And they let you do it. And that's when I really was like, that's when the wheels started spinning. I'm like, so 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 why do y'all get to do that? You know what I mean? It was just like, that's where it got to. It was like, so why do, who the fuck says y'all get to do that? That's when I started learning about ISRC codes. And I was like, oh, it's a fingerprint. Oh, uh, And then the very, I'll say it a million times. You're in a very rare space. Like I keep thinking, like I could, I've been doing music for a long time. How many times have I met any publishers? Anyone who publishes music? Anyone who's like, yeah, I publish. Like I have a catalog, and yeah, you should publish. I should, I can publish your music to. You need managers, you need artists, producers, photographers, videographers, promoters, marketers, distribute like. It's like the one little nit you found it. You found like a crack. There's like nobody was looking. <laughs> like you found it. Everybody was looking at it. You just found like you a mean... very important e piece. Like that literally. Like I'm gonna just go niche on this, and that's why it's just gonna work. Because like nobody's paying attention to that. And I and I, I try to make this very clear. It's like my intentions are always super pure, and I feel like I found that niche because I'm not looking to get money from you. I'm looking to help you make money. I think that's the difference between every position you mentioned and a publisher. Right. That's a good point. I think about that all the time. I was like, okay, am I going to give my money to distro kid who doesn't even know who James official is? Or am I going to give it to my homie who actually has a, a stake in this, who like might even be incentivized to get more streams because he's getting a cut. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, he actually, not only that, but he cares about me as his friend and wants to see me do well. Again, Distro Kid is like, who? And, and, We're just going to put your song on, like, you know what I mean? Like, it makes more sense friend. if you know someone. As as, if you friend. know someone as a personal relationship, it's like, it makes way more sense. They're invested. You're going to be like, oh, how come your music isn't here? How come your music isn't there? How come Distro Kid's not doing nothing? Like, TuneCore, they're not doing, they're not doing nothing. They're going to put it, boom, Spotify, Apple Music, title, blah, blah, check, 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 check. It's just like, you know what I mean? It, it just makes sense. It's almost like, do I want to buy a beat from a nigga off YouTube or do I want a custom, you know what I'm saying? A custom package where I know someone's actually putting thought of me into it while they're creating it. Like, you know what I'm saying? When they're doing the work, like, it really does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and, and as your friend, even if it was a position where it's like, oh, I, I, I benefit me the best, it still might be a situation where it's like, no, actually, I think Distro Kid would suit you best in this situation. You know what I mean? That that's where I always want to keep it open. Where it's like, yo, it's I mean, now I've always said that. I was like, yo, if you do find, like, I hey, just keep me on the line. Make sure I got a seat at the Grammys when you get one. That's all I, you know what I mean. But other than that, bro, it, my my job is to make sure you find a way. Right. 
And that's how I always look at it. It makes sense too. It's not like we're doing anything long term, like no long no long term contract or anything like that. It's literally just per song. You know, it's like as needed. There's no like Yeah. It's not like we're, we're like tied in necessarily. It's like I can I can go where where I want to go. You can go, you know, it's just like we're both like freelance, you know, there's it's no risk really. Exactly. You know, it's not like you're going a whole out with a nigga or some shit, you know, like Exactly. So And you know, we make this clear all the time. Like, yo, this is all yours. I'm just holding yeah. it. Like, if I got pulled over, I'm going to tell the cops, like, I'm just holding it for a friend. This ain't even my shit. Like, it's... Yeah. I swear. <laughs> right. But, like, even when I'm, uh, even when we, uh, like, it, with anybody I work with, you know, but it started, it stemmed with you. It was any time uh, we did a new song, I never would take money out the tune core to pay for the new song. I would pay for it right out my account. Cause I always want to keep record of, yo, this is how much was made. Like, you know what I mean? Like that, that that's how transparent I want to always be. It's like, yo, this is anytime anybody got a question, it was and it's sitting there. You you want it? It's, you know what I mean? It's not much yet, but you have it. Right. It's always there. Right. I ain't even checked it myself though. I ain't even checked it, but like it's accruing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And that's what so. I, and that's a, like, that's what was like the light bulb for me for publishing. It was like, uh, it's like a stock that never goes down. That's how I always presented it. Yeah. I'm like, that's a stock that never goes down. And that's how I kept saying it. it was like, yo, you, you, uh, that's one of those times where I did say, uh, yo, uh, I forecasted the fact that artists is going to be stocks and, and the catalogs are going to be mutual funds. Yeah. Yeah, now they tri- now they putting them in their wills, like for real. But like even with these articles, it's it's just people like over the over the, even over the weeks, it's just you kept hearing these names it's like oh this these people uh, these people. Uh, they, they bought this uh, uh, catalog and these people's catalog and these people's catalog and then this first uh, article about Blackstone what they got a trillion or something in assets and they're the ones buying all the companies that are buying all the catalogs and one of the things I was thinking about when all of this was popping off was the fact that yo they, they must be collecting like funds they must be collecting uh like crypto will be coins. They must be collecting these assets. And um, when I was t- when in talks with Twitch, what two years ago, a year ago, what have you? It might have been a year ago to date, maybe. <laughs> but um, the only thing that's holding me back from being a distro kid or a, a Universal Publishing Music Group on there as TAMG is the size of my catalog. Everything else is in place. So it's like, to me, I'm looking at that relative to what everything else is going on. It's like that shit's not too far off where I can build a catalog and 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 you know, Vivendi buys AAA Media Group, who's bought by Blackstone, who's a trillion dollar company. You know what I mean? It's like these are the moves that you know people are are making. Of course, you know I'm I'm way low on that totem pole, but that's the realistic. Um, trajectory of that of what's going on right now like well because like you said yeah. it's, it's 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 not too many of these companies these companies that are being buying catalogs are companies that are being created overnight these are people who just fund put put funds together and was like yo let's buy up these catalogs and then sell the company literally you you read about these yeah. companies they 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 spotted up six months ago had two rounds of funding, ended up with three hundred million dollars, went and bought two hundred something million dollars worth of catalogs, and then somebody went and bought them. And it's like happening in front of our eyes. And like these these just these articles just highlight the hell out of it because it's just each one or at, each article is actually talking about the other one. And it's kind of crazy. Like these it's just showing like you just I don't know it's it's publishing is wild and I thought it was wild when I first like stumbled upon it 
and and as I researched it since then, it's it's only gotten more wild. Like he used to be tame. Like it's really getting crazy. You yeah, know? <laughs> exactly. In the He's... last like eighteen months or so, like all the amount of artists I've seen selling off the like I've never remember hearing about this ever. Like no one ever sold their. That wasn't a thing. All of a sudden, it's left and right. Oh, so and so. So it's like, wait, what? He was <laughs> dying to own right. their masters, and now people are understanding why. Yeah, they, yeah but now p- people are understanding so why they want to own it. Right. You can't sell some shit right. you can't you don't own. Right. And then when I'm hearing about how other like um one of these articles, who was it? Jason Aldean. He um actually just pull him up. Just pull him up. I don't want to get to because these are this this I think this is a super interesting topic. And it's 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 affecting people. It's gonna affect pe- way more people than people think. <laughs> that makes sense. More people is gonna be affected by this than the people that actually. Than more than you would think. Yeah. Because when it comes down to it, it's like once because it, it's it comes down to what are they what are they gonna do with these catalogs. Yeah, it seems like that's almost like I don't know. It's almost like some metaverse shit. Like they're 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 stocking up for something that they're not even sure is even there yet, but they know it's coming. You remember like some type of I don't know. You remember I was talking about the shortage of like streaming shows and how to me that was a sign of creators should get ready. Oh, they they stocking back up to uh, open up studios and all that. And I think so. Is that what you said? I think that I think that might be one right. of their uh, things they're gonna have. I saw, to do. Uh, I saw a clip the other day where like the average Netflix show has like the average TV show uses like a hundred different samples from different songs or something like that. Be like five seconds to like you know anywhere from yeah. like three seconds like to seven average, seconds. It's like a hundred. Yeah, and they just like play it was like a hundred placements per episode of like, of a regular show. I was like on average. Yep. Like, so if you think that there's not enough space for you in licensing, like just think about that. I was like, mm-hmm. like it's, it's kind of crazy. Whole lot, whole like, lot. It used to be yeah. the uh, the goal was to get your beat into um, what's it called love and hip hop. If you got your beat into love and hip hop, oh, uh, you you was on the map. Yeah, I can see that, and that's when I really got into it. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, well, before publishing, I was into like audio post production. Remember, I started getting into audio post production real heavy, and just wanted to do like soundtracks and do the sound, you know, background music and all that good stuff. I put that reel together before I even understood what publishing was, and then when publishing came into the picture, that connected so many dots. It was ridiculous. I'm like, wait a minute. That it it was so many dollar signs popped up when the, those <laughs> dots were connected. I was like, wait a minute. Y'all get paid every single time <laughs> this happens. Are you serious? Yeah. 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 That shit's really nuts. Pop ups. But that's really got me interested, especially when um it wasn't just um. It wasn't just like songs. It was producers were the ones. You know what I mean? It wasn't even just the artists that were like on movie soundtracks. It was the producers who were putting beat pack after beat pack after beat pack in music supervisors' hands so they could have all the music they needed for a horror movie or all the music they needed for an action flick or that's where the money was. It was like, but then they, but how they um, had to do research on how they displayed this stuff. Like they, you got to really know who, like that's a, that's a market where you really got to know who you're talking to because you got to know what part of the beat they want to hear. You want to, you, you got to know how much of it they, they want to hear. You got to know what project they're working on. You know what I mean? Cause they're going to get a hundred of these today. Right. And once you make those connections, and those are the main connections I wanted was artist managers, video uh, producers, music supervisors. You get those connections, 
they're not going to be searching all the time for somebody new. So once they like you for whatever genre you're good at or whatever sound you're good at, contract. Yeah. Not contract, contract, but we calling him every single time we need this. Retainer. Yeah. Some, yeah. It, it almost seems as if, like, putting your music on streaming services is probably the least amount of money you can make as a person in music. <laughs> I've always you know said, what I'm saying? Like, I, I, all the other options, that, like, when it's, like, performing, licensing, placements, like, sync deals, like, you know, even, like, selling beats, you know? Yeah. A lot of producers probably make way more, see their first checks way before artists do. Yeah. You know? Even engineers, like, <laughs> you know? I've always... um Reference Spotify is an amazing marketing tool. That's it. Yeah. Now, if you perform, that's different. Obviously, that's where you get the bag. But like, but as far as revenue, Spotify, you probably spend more money than you make from there. Trying to get your numbers up. Spotify. There yeah. are streaming platforms where, like Tidal, where you get a nice little lump sum of what you what you put out there. But with that being said, they don't have they don't have a large audience. So yeah, you're getting a large uh, proportionally. You get a large amount proportionally, but if you want to market, you gotta you need a larger audience. So what what helps? It's it's kind of like that whole like when you were saying at least on TikTok, the, it's going viral. You know, yeah. So it's like you, you got to play. You got to play all sides of it. Yeah, you gotta be smart about that shit. I think we're gonna see more artists do like the. I mean, we don't get into this topic, but I think we're gonna see more artists do like the, like the Kanye play, like not say like the STEM player, but like putting their music exclusively somewhere where you gotta pay. Or like, I think we're gonna see more artists like try to pay while their music soon. I think I don't think the the streaming thing is gonna keep up for long. I think I think niggas are getting tired of that. And it's like, if you have a really strong, if you can get ten thousand people to all, you know, pay a dollar, you know, a month, for like some Patreon type of thing where you just releasing exclusive music to them and they can decide if they want to release it on YouTube or whatever. They just want to keep it within the community and you just performing and selling them merch and like you can live off that. You got ten thousand loyal supporters all paying you a dollar a month just to just to stream your music, like shit. Just give me a thousand. You know what I'm saying? You're right. I can make a thousand pay ten. I can get a thousand. <laughs> that that too. Sounds like that a lot too. of emails. Ten thousand sounds like a lot of emails. <laughs> <laughs> however you want. However you want to split it up. I get you know a thousand. Saying, but like, give me ten. Yeah. <laughs> I just like the idea of like a dollar per artist. Like we already yeah, have like yeah. our subscriptions that we pay for already. Like paying fifteen dollars for Spotify. Well, maybe you just pay fifteen dollars, you know, for fifteen different, or maybe just six different artists or whatever. Like however many, you know. Ooh, you talking about on Spotify? Stop it! Wait, I like that idea. You talking about have a Spotify like a cable TV cable subscription where you pick your premium channels. Right. So instead right. of paying the ten dollars right. a month for Spotify, you pay a dollar for each artist you actually want to listen to, or you pay ten dollars or right. five dollars for uh, a pack of two, a pack of three genres, or like how would you do it? Or a dollar for just I was this artist. Per artist. So per artist, and it's way more like direct to artists. Like you know, like the artist gets a way bigger cut from that check out a percentage because these are these are specifically people listening yes. to me they're not just on your platform and just getting nah these people directly subscribe to me so i want so x amount so what's the incentive you know? of them going for the dollar and not the ten dollars especially if i got t at least 10 artists i want to listen to like that they I might mean, still do it, it that way but what is the no. what's the you know i'm, I'm asking i don't know what, what's the what, yeah, yeah, what would be the yeah. incentive like all right, it's a dollar. Like, okay, cool. I could pay ten dollars and get all the artists. Why am I paying a dollar for 
yours. What am I getting? What's well, the... the artist pulls their music off the platform? Okay, and it's the I'm... only way you can now get you... that artist now. Now you talking about revolutions and shit. <laughs> no, nah, I'm saying that's, no, that's fire. That's I'm fire. I think that yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. If they if somebody you know would have did mean? that, like, like if Kanye West pulled this shit off, and I'm paying my dollar immediately. A lot of people that's gonna pay their dollar. <laughs> Not only that, but you mixing content. If you pull off your tweets and all your IG lives and all that shit, and you put all that there too, are you mm. kidding me? There's a lot of people who could bring a lot of like. So there's a lot of people who I would pay to see a dollar, like you so know, you subscribe to their to their content in general. You know, I mean, they already like, got they this want artist page. Like, what? They already got the artist page. So you're saying to pull if that artist, like if Kanye West pulled his shit off of Spotify, and so, mm-hmm. but he still has a, a Spotify artist page, so I could pay a dollar to go to that artist page now. Because that the artist page will have the merchandise, it will have the videos, it will have all the links that you're talking about. I'm saying, like, pull all that shit down, though. Why Why even keep any of it up at that point? Right, that's what I'm saying. So paywall it instead of pulling it down. Right. Like, now it's blacked off unless you pay this dollar to, to check my shit out. Right. Oh, that's crazy. Right. Okay, so it's not even about removing yeah. the membership. It will be more about, all right, well, I'm removing mines from this monthly membership. You got to pay an extra dollar for mine. They could go that way, too. I mean, I think it just, I think there's a different, different, few different ways you could like mix that up. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely feel like that, that would kind of solve the problem of certain artists being like, oh man, I'm getting paid, you know, one album for 1500 streams or that's some bullshit. And other, other artists, you know, they're I getting mean, like billions of streams and then the album sales barely even, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it seems like they don't even check out for the amount of streams that they're getting. You know, like, it's kind of like, it's like artists are upset on both ends. I mean, as cliche as it's starting to sound at this point, I think NFTs would, <laughs> would solve that. Especially with this, I know, yeah. I know. But with the, uh, there's, there's this project called Lens Protocol. Like, uh, I think I mentioned it last time. It was Lens Protocol where um, it's, it's blockchain social media and literally anything you post, your account itself, you that, everything yeah. is an Every NFT. Right, so you own everything, and people can actually buy memes or whatever from you to own it themselves or to share it themselves. And you know, if artists went that route, where their whole profile is an NFT and anything they post, so every time they, you know, they they post a link to their album, it's only able to get you know, it's only twenty thousand of these. You know, I mean, it's in, and it's in their own Encompass NFT where you got to be a member in their social media, like Lens Protocol. You know, something like that. I don't know yeah. about this, like, but I'm just, you know, basing it off the comp. Yeah. You know, it'll probably, it'll probably, like, you know, be a combination of, like, you know, maybe something that probably involve both, like, a direct-to-consumer. Like, yeah, I think I think somehow or another that idea has to happen of, like, I'm thinking artists going to start getting around the streaming service. Right. Of, like, Ownership is the know. problem, like. Cause like like I said, Spotify Spotify is great for marketing, so it's like all right, well how like, artists are gonna start selling out the trunk digitally? Yeah, exactly. That's and that's the lens. You know, like the shit. Trunk, <laughs> like somebody's gonna figure that out digital, and they're gonna crack that shit, and it's gonna be like nah, uh, we have the trunk with it on the internet. Straight up, I think that's like you know the metaverse saying? in the um, the the uplift world where it's like Minecraft. There's the ability to create a shop. And in that shop, you can place an NFT, and people can come to that shop and buy that shop, and and, and have the NFT, and they can take that shit and put it in their wallet and take it anywhere they want on the metaverse. So you know, I, and there's gonna be a million of these. So that might be a out the trunk type of situation right there. I mean, Snoop Dogg, I'm sure he's gonna be doing it for sure. I th- I'm sure he's gonna have block parties yeah. and all types of shit, where you're gonna be able to buy his yeah. music off the grill and shit. You know? Or he's oh his shit's gonna yeah. be in fucking drug vials and shit. He's gonna have crack, you know what I mean? When he got that crinat, he's gonna be up in there Bullshit. like for real selling meta drugs like a month of meta dope. Lit, lit. And every time you buy one, you, you, you like your your meta vision gets blurred. <laughs> you get all these different like effects. What be a wild pill? Hell yeah! Um, it's from, there's like some energy like that. <laughs> Hell yeah! Just staking it in your wallet, you get right. 
uh, what was the first story called? The Black Rock. Yeah, I said Blackstone. Nigga. And I think in this article it said not to confuse, not to be confused with Blackstone. But yeah, it's just this group that they're just buying up catalogs. Right they're just running things right now. Closer look. Uh, got a little diversity. A little diversity. Right. Like all black. See what you did there. A little, little on the nose, but you know, <laughs> still cool. Still cool. Uh, all right. <laughs> I don't have a lot to say here. I had two chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no more chairs on. It's fucked up. So you know what's happening with this? Oh, this is what you're talking about with them acquiring all the smaller companies that acquired yeah. catalogs. That's what I'm trying to pull it up. I thought I had it up already. But yeah, they're pretty much buying everything up that is left on the table. And trillion of assets under management. Yes. Yes, this is what I was talking about though, right there. So they already got ten trillion of assets under management. They keep buying more stuff from Bad Bunny, J Balvin, and Taney. Which is funny because they even bought a but other companies. And that's the crazy part, because it's like, oh, how did how did y'all get them? You know that what makes me think when I see that is like, did they purposely? So you're saying that these these smaller companies were started on purpose just so the bigger company could come in and snatch them up? Like this was like a. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know if that's the play, but that's what it looked like, and and that's what I just kept so seeing over that the months. So people... is it is it possible that some of these people that sold to these smaller companies didn't want to sell to BlackRock? So like, what well, we gonna come up with? A smaller, we're gonna come up with White Rock, right, and White Rock right. gonna buy it, and then we're gonna buy. That would be jacked. Like, that makes me wonder, like, is that what's going on? Like, y'all just let all these little companies do it, just so you can come and sweep them up. Like, sounds a little. That's a little shiesty if you put it like that, because even Three Hundred is, is caught up in these deals. Uh, I think Black Rock is owns Three Hundred, um, by way of. I think another company owning them. It's not even in this article. It's in the other article. And that's the crazy part. Cause as we go through the articles, you'll see that it's like a Russian doll where it's just like, every time you open this big company, it's this bigger company with these bigger companies, you know, these big companies. In it. And it's like, Oh, yeah. and you start seeing the game that is being played. And it's like, ah, all right. Well played. Because there's even companies like um, Big Machine that bought Tim McGraw's catalog, and um, one of the companies that just bought um, Jason Aldean is, I think, bought by BlackRock. Either BlackRock or Blackstone. But in Primary Wave, remember we were talking about Primary Wave? BlackRock bought Primary Wave. And they were the ones that were sucking up all those other catalogs left and right. Yeah, it sounds like a play. I mean, it's not I don't BMG. Know. We were talking about them last week, and they got sucked up by Black uh, BlackRock. And they just made those purchases, like, like they they made those purchases probably for leverage to, to be bought. You know what I mean? I just bought David Bowie's catalog. You see? Oh, like, yeah, it says right there. As well as the Kevin Files and he labeled 300 Entertainment for 400 million. You remember when, uh, what was it? Uh, QC was trying to buy 300. Remember, that's what we was talking about. 
And that's why, and that's when I got confused. I remember oh. reading about them together, and I was like, "Oh, I thought they were together for some reason." But no, QC was trying to buy three hundred, and then Warner Warner came under and bought uh three hundred for four hundred million, and then Blackstone came and bought Warner. <laughs> it's like, yo, let me hold that. <laughs> like, for real, like this is. And I know it sounded crazy, like, over the weeks. I kept looking at it like, nah, I mean, this this looks funny. I don't understand what's going on here while everybody's scooping these up and blah, 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 blah. And everything just starting to come to a head. Like, uh. And then they got this uh, big document at the bottom talking about it's a big fund. And the crazy thing about this fund is that they're um, uh, basically going towards diversity and women in music and and things like that, and, and they're just talking about all the names that they got involved already, and the money, where they're spending their money, and the type of places that they want to spend more money, and it's just a big fund. It's the Illuminati <laughs> times two at this moment. So it sounds like... <laughs> Wait, so I'm just wondering, like, okay, so who the fuck is at the top of BlackRock? Do we know these, like, Probably just some people we never heard of before, right? I mean, a picture. You, you don't recognize that? <laughs> I don't know. Nah. Oh, Sanjay in the middle. I recognize him. I don't recognize him. Who is Sanjay? Maybe that's not Sanjay. Maybe that's not Sanjay. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh, my yo. Wait, no. Is that Kevin? No, it's not Kevin Lyle. That's Who is that, though? Just a ball black guy. He looked like L.A. Reed. L.A. Reed. He like Chicago Reed. Right. So. Oh, and then not everybody's not even Black Rock. Frank Cooper is Black Rock. We got one, two people from Black Rock, three people from Black Rock. <laughs> so his name. <laughs> This isn't so. This isn't Black Rock. That's th- three of them. So I mean, unless they three of them got deep ass pockets, I mean, it's a, <laughs> holding ten trillion dollars in assets in them trousers. No, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell who's rich. Oh shit! <laughs> just some photos. I do not try to. <laughs> no, I'm trying. No, I'm just basing it based off of uh. There's only three members from BlackRock on there. How big is the team? You got $10 trillion in assets. I mean, that's like investors, though. That's not like like catalogs and catalogs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm still... Maybe they're just very well connected. Like, you know, maybe they're just, you know... $10 Ten trillion dollars. We've been There's seeing no catalogs go for sixty million, a hundred million, three hundred million at the most. I've seen one. So we're, we're, yeah, to me, a ten trillion. Like, so you want to buy it all? You're gonna buy it all. <laughs> that's, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> like. I want to know what they you own. Can buy it all, then like control all the music, basically. That's what I'm saying. What they about to do with it? Turn it off. Sounds like you could buy it all. Sounds like a hater. Ten trillion. They shit. just turn it off. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. I was like, you gonna buy all that shit and just turn it off? You go. <laughs> That's petty. You know what I mean? Or just only play the songs you like. Oh, that's petty. You know? That's super petty. I mean, For real. I don't know, man. I wish I was Black Rock. I tell you that much. <laughs> like, they gonna run the movie game know. for a long time. Oh, yeah. You ain't gonna get no type of dope soundtrack for the low. Yeah. That's how I'm looking at all these movies. It's like, yo, I hate y'all. That's hate. I'm hating on them motherfuckers. I wish I had a couple hundred million. <laughs> Buy me a catalog or two. Fuck an NFT. Get this damn. <laughs> Let me get a catalog. It's just so easy to make money once you got money, you know? I mean, it's, it attracts like, money. You say what? <laughs> money attracts money. 
Yeah. Especially you know how to manage money. If you got money, you know how to manage money. It's like, how? how? That's what be pissing me off the most. People who got money don't know how to manage it. It's like, oh, fuck them. You have no idea. Just put the rest away. Put the rest of <laughs> be managed. No, there's no correlation. <laughs> there's no correlation. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, I even realized that myself, like, just making more money. Like, I didn't get any better with managing it, making more. You know, it's See, like you don't get better with managing it till you actually are just intentional about managing it. Like, <laughs> or like having to. more of it, it doesn't just solve itself. Or you, have you make to. more, it doesn't just like, or have to. That's or what I'm saying. To. Like, yeah. I've always been in a position where I had to manage. So when I got money, it was just like, I don't need this. I don't need, you know, and you're just sitting on it. And then you, you get to do things to make more money with the money. Like, I'm not saying that I'm saying I'm sitting on $100,000 or something, but. I know how to manage 300 very well. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you give me 300,000, I'm not going to go and spend 300,000 like it's 300. I'm going to probably yeah. put 100 and, you know, 175,000 of it away because I have no idea what to do with it yet. And, you know, because it's like, I don't know, that's just how I've always been. This is like, I mean, I mean, that pisses uh, that pisses Shorty off a lot because it's like I just she spends money any chance she gets. I spend money when I need to, and then when we go out, I can spend and do whatever the fuck I want and take care of both. You know what I mean? And, and then and then she appreciates it. You know, <laughs> it's like like go ahead and get the steak and the lobsters and the and the wine. It's, that's what that's what I say for. Go ahead and get the. <laughs> Yeah, you want to blow it on boba every day? <laughs> it's like, nah, I'm gonna save my boba money and get a steak on Saturday. It's, it's not even like I don't, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> shit. Simple to me, but yeah. If somebody gave me ten trillion dollars in assets, though. I'm going to Netflix first. Like, I know y'all like to blow money. <laughs> I know y'all like to fuck play. some shit up. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's an easy play. Like, how much you want for it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> 700 million. What you got? <laughs> okay, I guess. That's not about that. <laughs> I guess. We can... Throw out <laughs> Yeah. Well, I have to run that up the flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> run it up then. Run that <laughs> shit up. That's all we say. Give me a hundred million. I'm gonna blow it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably give me one of them islands straight up. Nah, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be <laughs> one or two mil that just is gonna be unaccounted for. Oh no, like, you know what I'm saying? Give me a hundred mil. It's gonna be one to two. It's completely. I don't know what happened. No. Don't ask me. Once we, I don't. I don't. Know. Once we found out how much an island cost, I I had to up that number. Like I might, I might blow twenty. I might blow twenty on the island. If I got the opportunity, I'll blow twenty on the island. If you got a hundred, yeah. Bro, if I got a hundred, a hundred million. If I got a hundred million, I'm blowing twenty on the island. Well, I got that's like some billion dollars. Yeah, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I would have to see what the because I would buy the one with the right. resort already attached and everything. So I would just have to see what the upkeep is before I start making money. That's what it would come down to. It would definitely be a flip to make some money. Yeah, the maintenance as far as like staff and oh, okay. you know what I mean. You like, talking about a resort? Yeah, like one yeah, of the islands. That means other people. Well, I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't do it unless it was like, making some money. Like you said, oh. that would uh, just buying one for a toy would be some billion dollar shit. If I had a hundred million, I could make money off a twenty million dollar flip. Yeah. So that's the first thing I was thinking about was the one with the resort. But yeah, to just buy one to have that that would probably be a more of a upwards of the five hundred million area. Yeah, 
just just because. Yeah, that's the one. Christmas them. gift. Yeah, yeah, like it's like buying buying a thirty thousand dollar car. Like, I mean, I mean that's it's not a, it's not a lot, but I ain't got enough to just <laughs> right. <laughs> not smart, right? Exactly, I ain't smart. It sounds fun though. <laughs> not right. smart at all. But that's how I would be with these catalogs. No bullshit. Real talk. If if, if somebody had a mint date for a catalog, ooh, put a thumb in that one. To the mint date for a catalog. Oh, like like NFT in the catalog. Yeah, they auction and all. Didn't didn't Nas do that? He just sold. Didn't Nas just do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he did it. It was like how he set it up was like a random. I th- I think it was like a randomized way where you could only you get uh, royalties from certain songs. Which was yeah. it was cool, but it, yeah, it back, but it was all the centralized um, exchange as well. Uh, it was on like a royalty exchange okay. website. It wasn't like a anything decentralized or NFTs or anything like that. Still cool. You, you still get, yeah. you know. But you know me, you you already showed me NFTs. So, <laughs> you already showed me that technology. So you know, I know I can own more than yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> you know, I'll wait. I'll wait for the next. I'll wait yeah. For the next train. <laughs> I'm going to wait for the person who got your royalties, the NFT, the royalties, and own that shit. Hold up. But, um, yeah, I mean, I always think this, I always thought this shit was interesting. Uh, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people out there who thinks it's interesting, too, just doesn't know what to call it. Kind of like when I was doing audio post-production. I didn't know what I was doing. So I think that audience is there. I think the audience, there's a lot of artists who out there want to publish their own shit and just wants to be, you know, caught up on things like this. Like, what is the benefit of me going to the studio all the time, every week, spending $400 a month in the studio to build a dope catalog? People keep jumping at these singles and these albums, and it's like, do you see what's going on? People are investing in artists life works not the last hit you had you want to you want to somebody to invest in your last hit go get a manager go get somebody who wants to get money off of you you know what i mean like not that every manager does that but if that's what you're looking for is to make money off your next song then that's what you need is a manager to go put you in a show and you know and get you on the radio and things like that but if you want to build uh some work that you can be proud of and, you know, hopefully your kids could live off of one day and maybe even sell and take care and open up a fucking jewelry store or something. I don't know what you want. You know what I mean? Like, whatever you want to do with it, at least make it worth it. Everybody's always worrying about, oh, I spent this much at the studio and I only did this much and I can't, I ain't done, no, no, you got to buy my shit because I spent this much on it. Like, that ain't my problem, bro. <laughs> First of all, why are you still going to a studio, bro? You don't, you don't <laughs> you support from home. You know what I mean? Like, where, where we, we are at? already, you are already <laughs> hustling like, backwards. backwards. Like, bro, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> if you if, if you worried about expenditures, you better hop yeah. on YouTube yeah, University. Yeah, exactly. You got a big budget. Ah, <laughs> uh, better get you a laptop and some software. But they don't want that. They YouTube, want YouTube some video on how to. Listen, it's th- it's always three things. You can have it, um, good, good, cheap, or fast. You can only have two though. Yeah. Can't have all three. Yeah. That's words to the wise right there. You can have a good, cheap, or fast. You can't have all three. You can have two of them. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. I really feel like the same way that um, studios have kind of gotten X'd out of the 
out of the process a little bit. Like you hear more and more artists talking about how they would just record from home and maybe send it off to an engineer and they don't got to like do the whole, the whole process of people booking studio time. Just isn't, especially for like new artists, it's kind of like a dead thing, right? Yeah. I feel like the same thing is going to happen with videographers soon. I feel like I kind of want to call it now just for the sake of like I hope having not. it out there. I feel like the same thing on a on a on a smaller level. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, like I say, on the big time, you know, the big time artists they still use the big studios. They're still going to use a video. They're still going to do the same shit that big artists have been doing. But for smaller artists who have gotten you know a thousand listeners on Spotify or less and shit like that, like I think the videographers. I think more people. I think the technology is going to get to a point where you can start doing it yourself. First of all, it's like people can already shoot them with iPhones. You don't even need the the equipment that you need to have before you had to have a red camera and all these different. You know what I mean? Now it's like the newest iPhone. If your home, if your homie got some skills, the quality is there. Like you know, what I'm saying you know how to edit. You can take your time. The quality is there. Really, the issue for most artists is you don't know nobody with skills. You want to do it yourself, and you can't be behind the camera and in front of the camera at the same time. But I'm really thinking drone technology might change that. The more I've been following these drones, these autonomous drones. I love that shit too. Like if you're good with programming and like running like little like Yeah. And everything's being like ran off shit, of Python. Like, everything's being ran off of Python. Yeah. Oh everything coding it. If you're really good at that shit already and you know how to code this this uh this camera to do all type of little listen. I think I think that could I think it's gonna end up squashing the industry. First of all, I've already seen just from an artist perspective, videographers are coming down their prices. Like significantly, they're getting cheaper and cheaper. Yeah, like everybody. And that's because like, like everything, creative wise. Yeah, yeah. creative wise, like people are finding more ways around that. People are doing TikToks and shit. I'm like, oh man, I'm getting more tragic traffic from a TikTok than I paid for a thousand dollars for this videographer. This big budget video, like I just did a little song of me bopping or whatever, you know, being fun, you know, having fun in my song. That shit got a million views. Where as opposed to, you know what I mean, me paying videographers, like some for some people they they're kinda over that shit. You know what I'm saying? As a consumer, sometimes it doesn't don't get me wrong, like I said, it still works. We see it still working, especially on the on the major scale. But I think for the little artists, we're gonna start to see the same things happen with like studios of people starting to realize I can do this myself, or I can find a way around this. Like and I agree. simply because of technology catching up. I agree with you. I just don't want it to happen too fast. I, I agree with you hundred percent. And the reason I don't want it to happen too fast is the same thing that happened with graffiti artists and the same thing that happened with DJs. They lose a space to be creative, to, to do their thing. I feel like um, the new the new videographer, you know, the kids running around. And I say kids because I'm just saying new. But the, the guys running around, when I say guys, let me in general. People running around. They are them running around. <laughs> yeah, they running around they are... with their four K cameras and their boom mics, and you know, I think that's a new graffiti artist as far as visuals go for the hip hop world. So it's like, even though they might be low budget, it's like they're running around, you know, putting their visuals on the game. So it's like, you know, as long as they keep progressing in there, I think the problem has always been a lack of progressing in those fields. People find easier ways to do it and stop progressing, you know? So it's like you get it. I think that was the big lag when it came to beat makers. You know, if it was a long time where people started making their own beats and everybody started coming up with these popcorn ass beats and people started accepting it because it was relatable. Oh, this was something I could make and something that I heard or something nah, that I could dance to. You know what I think it really was though? You know what I think that really was? Sampling. Yeah. People cracking down on sampling. I think once they yeah. crack start cracking down on sampling, hip hop got so much cornier. Because the people beats got so the production yeah. got so much more. They start using all these goofy little sounds and shit. They couldn't use these jazz samples and all you know what I'm saying? The beats got goofy. You remember in college? That's really my hypothesis. You remember in college when people yeah. wanted me to make a... I don't know if you... I don't know. I always made beats. You, you probably were there for a few times where people wanted me to sample something and it was like, I don't really want to... I don't really want to... Because to me, sampling was cheating. I love sampling, but it was like at, at certain times when I wanted to be creative, it was like, well, that's kind of cheating. That's I always looked at sampling like it was a, it was a, just cheating. I love sampling, but it was like yeah. when you're trying to make... When somebody... It was a difference when somebody wants you to make a beat and somebody wants you to make an original beat. There was a difference back in the day. An original beat means yeah. no 
samples. That was the difference. If you wanted to make a beat, I could right. make you a beat. I could sample all day. But when somebody asked me for an original beat, no samples. That means I took my kick drums and I EQ'd the fuck out of them. I mixed my shit. I took my snares. I chopped them up. I, you know what I mean? No samples. Because when when you sell... Well, I'm, I mean, me, I'm, I'm selling beats since I was in fucking middle school, high school and shit. So it was like... I had to learn these things because when I'm selling a beat to somebody and they, they need it stemmed out and they find a sample and that bitch is like, oh, did you clear this? You know, and now they sending you back, uh, you got to send them back $300. You know what I mean? It's like that, that, that'll that teach you some shit. <laughs> you know, why you, why you, uh, why you learning in that shit. So, and that, and that, and that yeah. takes a big part in like publishing as well. It's like all those experiences I had, you know, coming up and doing the music and all that shit, it just dawned on me when it came to publishing and it was like this is this is where i want to help people because this is these are the problems i kept running into okay like to me audio is like breathing i love it i could make a beat i could mix a beat i could mix sample uh vocals i could sample some shit i could record something so it was like being able to have that knowledge and to walk somebody through the publishing process is I think is so important because a lot of that stuff what from what I noticed a lot of that stuff is missed when somebody was trying to put their shit on Apple. It's like, uh, did you mix this? Did you master it? Did you you know what I mean? It's like simple shit like uh are you gonna take them breaths yeah. out? Are you just gonna <laughs> like are you, yeah. did you send me an MP three? What is this, yo? I don't understand <laughs> You know, it's like it's like all those little things people don't think about when it's like that's all, all that shit. Is there any metadata on here? Who's the producer? Where's your IPI? How are you gonna get paid if I don't if they can't even identify you? So it's like all, a lot of that shit, especially um, especially when people started not um. Uh, especially when I was recording people like in middle school, high school, they wanted me to start marketing for them. So I'm throwing parties and everything. So it was like, in my mind, it's like, how do I get people? Like, I, I understand how to make money doing music, but how do I make their music make money? You know, it was like, that was just something I guess was just thrown in my lap at a very young age. They're like, yeah, yeah, that's all great, but how, can you throw us a party? Can you get people to pay for tickets? Can you get us a show? Can you get us the only, like, that's a good question. <laughs> we did spend like a whole fucking weekend on this song. What can we do with it? Yeah. yeah. That's the most interesting part. Because I hear that argument a lot. Not even an argument. I hear that frustration from a lot of artists a lot. It's I, I, I put all this into it. How do I get something back? I'm tired of music. I don't want to do music. You know... You, I never understood that. I could, I can't. Like when people be like, "Yo, you still make beats?" It's like, I, yeah, I, yeah. If I had sat down and wanted to make a beat, I'm making fucking beat. Yes, it's, yeah. that's something I'm gonna ever stop doing. <laughs> like, yeah. So when I hear artists yeah. be like, "I don't want to do this no more," I don't want. I'm like, well, you know, what I mean, it makes you question like, what were you trying to do it for in the first place? I thought you were just good at it and like to do it. And then, you know, it's like a hobby that you can make some money with. And that's the goal. People are like, I got a talent and I deserve to make money with it. <laughs> like, really? That's cute. <laughs> like, so it's some people in a game like that. There's some artists in a game like that. You know, some people get in that way. I mean, that's so, a, it's okay to feel that way. But do some value. He's in the NBA. That's just six, eight. They don't love basketball. They just they're just six eight facts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like facts. All. No, when you say that, the first person I think about is Vince Staples. That's a good. That, Vince Staples makes me angry. Vince you know, Staples talks about his process. So he literally good. talks about like, yeah, I just get in the studio when I feel like it. Whenever I have an idea for a song, I just go to the studio and make some. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. But he treats it like a it's job. A few like that. I'm just like. Yeah, that's what he's just like. I'm just. It's like the same way. The same way I am about it. 
And I had to really like come to grips with that because I kept seeing like all these TikToks about people talking about getting the tech and like, oh, tech jobs are great. And like, how do y'all get into tech? Oh, I want a tech job and this and that. And I'm just like, oh, this is like a dream job to some people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and to me, I don't even care. This is just, I just fell into this because it was cool and they hired me and make some good money. Cool. Like, to me, I just lay, I want to rap. I want to do music and shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's the same way. <laughs> the exact same.